Good morning, Karina. Good morning, Martin. How are Good you today? Good morning. Thank you. We're fine. Thanks. Okay. Yes, we're fine. Good morning. It is really nice seeing you, and our audience is really eager to hear the perspective from the employers and trade unions on that. So the floor is yours to both of you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So Morten and I are going to talk to you about uh, the quality of the VET system in Denmark and the involvement of the social partners. So first, I'm going to give you some uh, some uh, highlights about the Danish uh, VET system. We call it a VET in a nutshell. So the VET system in Denmark is uh, based on the dual training principle, where you have uh, 25 to 30 percent uh, school-based education and uh, 70 to 75 percent is work-based training. The VET program in Denmark uh, qualifies students for labor market uh, entry as, as skilled workers. And that's a very important uh, thing that you can go right into a job after finishing the, the VET program. Uh, to start a VET program in Denmark, you have to have a completion, completion of a compulsory education, let's say primary school, and you have, have to have passed the final test in Danish and mathematics. The duration of the web pro program is between uh, two to five years, uh, the most typical being around uh, three and a half to, to four years. So that's um, the most, uh, the longest period uh, for the web program to be. We also have a special adult web program uh, for uh, adults who have work-based work experience. So they have a shorter, uh, shorter web, web period, uh, but I'll get back to that. Uh, another typical thing about the Danish uh, VET system is that there's a continuous uh, VET system, uh, for example, through AMO, which is call, shorter courses for, uh, for skilled workers. And you also have uh, some pathways to, uh, to higher education. So uh, this slide I'm going to show you now is uh, about the Danish uh, dual system. Uh, you can see that um, on the, the basic one level, it's uh, pupils finishing uh, primary school who start at a basic one uh, level where they both have uh, Danish and, and maths and other uh, curriculum, but they also have an, uh, a broad introduction to, uh, to some different kind of wet uh, programs. When they start at the, the basic two, uh, they choose a, a specific web program and uh, they have to decide which uh, which way to go in, in what kind of pro program they're going to, to take. After the finishing of the, the basic two, they get an individual contract with an employer. So they have uh, the dual system in, in action where you work, school periods, work, school periods, and etc. For those students who don't get uh, an individual contract with an employer, they go to an apprenticeship center where they have school as well as the other uh, time uh, as the other uh, pupils, but when they uh, when the other pupils are at uh, a, a workplace uh, training, they go to apprenticeship centers where they get training uh, in school facilities, but but real practical training, but in the school facilities. There's also if you you're you're not from. Um, you're not you know if you're not directly from uh, primary school you can, if, for example if you've worked or you've started some other kind of education you go to uh, you go to start directly at, at work two where you uh, at basic two where you uh, work school and that's an, another kind of uh, building to the to the system for elder students above 25 where they typically have uh, work based base experience perhaps they have some other kinds of uh, education before they get get an assessment of uh, prior learning uh, where they uh, the school uh, evaluates and, and judges how, how much qualifications they need to to close and finish up uh, as a skilled worker. So they have a typically a shorter work period, and they have a, a, a school period who, who works uh, who varies uh, uh, in, in, in concern how how much uh, how much they they need to uh, to. Um, participate in to, uh, to finish the program. But all, all that is a, it's a very individual combination. So uh, the Danish VT system is where the, the social partners is very involved. And why is that? Um, you can say that the social partners play a very central role in the management of development of that system in, in Denmark. 
It's due to, to that uh, 70 and to 75 percent is work-based training on a labor market that is regulated by collective agreements between the social partners. So that way, it's very natural that the social partners have a very strong role in the VET system. And uh, it's also the natural link between the needs of the labor market and the content of, uh, of, of VETs. And that means that the social partners have a responsibility to uh, adjust the content of the VET program as to new technologies or the needs for, uh, for new VET programs. The labor market also plays a vital role in financing the VET system, uh, where, uh, where the primary financing is, uh, is due to the labor market. I'll give you a bit uh, more words about that. Uh, it is so that the government is financing the schools while labor market is uh, financing the living costs for the, for the students. That's some kind of fundamental trade that the trade unions uh, accepts uh, introductory wages uh, for education, uh, while the the vet uh, pro, vet students are are in their education program. So the apprentices' wages are determined by collective agreements, um, and they are paid by the employers, and they increase over the years, starting to uh, forty to fifty percent of the minimum wage for skilled workers. Uh, increasing to about uh, 8%. So you can say that the, the wage uh, increase uh, during uh, the, the vet student uh, has a, a greater value to the, uh, to the company as to the competence, competence level uh, rises. This financing mechanism all, all take place in the Employers Reimbursement Fund, the AUB, which is a very uh, central function uh, for the Danish system. So you can see uh, on the figure, there's a, a, a screen where you can see um, the companies and the AUB, uh, uh, which is uh, the Employees Reimbursement Fund. So companies uh, contrib contribute uh, per full-time employee about uh, 400 euro per year. And the reimbursement is uh, fin financing the salary uh, while the apprentice is at school. And it's financing 80% of the students' traveling expense. And it also finances benefits for students in apprenticeship centers. Um, so there's also a, a compensation uh, where the, the companies get a reimbursed part of the salary while the employee participates in, in a VET program. So you can say that the AUB redistributes uh, the cost for the companies uh, to educate uh, VET students. And for the pupils, uh, vet, vet students, it's a, it's a way uh, of uh, getting a salary while they're at school. So in that way, the system undertakes that there's a uh, economic uh, fairness uh, for all participants in the, in the program. <clears throat> yes. Um, I will address the issue of uh, quality in bed and uh, how um, the involvement of the social partners is kind of a part, an important part of guarantee the quality of wet. You see, the overall uh, approach or criteria for uh, quality of wet uh, we see as um, that it meets labor market demands. And the best indicator of whether it meets uh, labor market demands is. Uh, the employment rate is if the students, if the candidates are employed after the education. So we follow that uh, indicator very uh, closely in the from social partners from the government. Uh, and the best source of knowledge about uh, labor market skills demands uh, are, from our point of view, the social partners, those who are uh, from day to day working in the companies. Uh, knowing the needs of uh, production and how it develops. We also have a social partner, a shared interest, shared interest in the, uh, in the quality of weight, weight and in weight in a high, uh, of high quality. As trade unions, we of course have a very strong focus on, on the uh, employability of our members, that they have had uh, weight training that uh, gives them a high level of employability. And from the point of view of the companies, uh, they, for, uh, they, of course, have a fundamental interest in having uh, employees that meet their qualification demand, their skill, the skills demand of the companies, and uh, a basis of a, uh, effect, efficient uh, production. 
As such, we have created quite complex system of involvement of social partners in influencing the system and even governing the um, uh, the bed system. Overall, overall, we have three levels of uh, cooperation around the uh, the bed system or governance of the bed system: a national level, a sectoral level, and a school level. On the national level, uh, we have the involvement in the of the main uh, labor market organizations. That means the uh, Danish employers' organizations, the, the Confederation of Trade Unions, in the Council of uh, the Danish Council for Wet, uh, and also the Danish Council for Seabed so for continuous uh, vocational education and training, where um, we are part of that council and also forms the presidency uh, with the, together with the independently uh, appointed uh, president appointed by the minister and it's Karina and I who, who who's at the presidency of this this council at the moment on the sectoral level we have the trade uh, uh, trade organization the trade committees uh, Trade committees, there are 57 of them uh, governing the 106 uh, VET programs in Denmark. They are formed by the, uh, in, the trade unions uh, and the trade and employers organizations, trade unions and employers organizations that are having the responsibility for the branches that uh, owns, so say, owns the collective agreements for the individual education. That means the uh, Danish Industrial uh, uh, Corporation and the Danish Metal Workers in uh, Metal Branch uh, uh, programs. That means the well, um, construction branch employ uh, employers in the uh, and the construction branch uh, branch employees in the building uh, construction educations and so on and so on. So in the trade committees, it's the uh, Organizations that are close to the uh, branches, close, close to the, the skills need of the individual branches that are governing uh, what is going on. And on the local level uh, and school level, uh, there are local trade committees and the schools where the social partners are at the local trade committees dealing with more school based problems in the educational programs and the uh, close co cooperation with local uh, labor markets. And also uh, the social partners are also represented at the school boards of the uh, vocational schools at most, uh, most technical and uh, business colleges. The social partners are forming, uh, having majority in the, at, in the school board. I will, Put a, few, put a few more words on the, the, these different levels. And then on the national level, the Danish Council of Wet, um, it's kind of founded in the law of education and has a formal foundation in the law uh, of uh, vocational education. And its role is to advise the Minister of Education um, in all issues concerning, on, on all issues concerning Wet. It has direct, direct as access to the minister, and of course, it works very closely in practical uh, issues with the Ministry of Education. <clears throat> and as you can see here, the it's kind of all overall questions it's like the, the structure of wet programs, frames the uh, curricula, um, cancelling and establishing new, new wet programs. <clears throat> um, Apprentice, which well, what which programs should be offered, and apprentice centers, and so on and so on. <coughs> um, also, the uh, which schools should be approved to uh, offer which uh, uh, vocational programs are decided or advised on from the uh, the council, Danish Council of Wits. As, as such, it's um, very important. It's a core part of the. Way the, uh, the social partners are governing uh, the VET system in Denmark, taking part in the governance of the VET system in Denmark, and meets like 10 times a year and um, uh, are on a very weekly basis involved in different issues on, on the development of VET and uh, pro pro problems 
that arises. <coughs> then there's the, the trade committees. Um, as, so, as I said, they are formed by and uh, appointed by the organizations that kind of hold the collective uh, agreements for uh, those uh, apprentices that are uh, those students that are active on the uh, individual programs. Um, they have the four, um, they have, so say, the formal right to um, uh, organize and define what is the, this area of education, this area of training they are responsible for. They are <clears throat> kind of uh, deciding on the duration structure of the specific programs, like the program for a carpenter or a chef or a waitress and so on. Uh, the division between what's part of the education, how many time, uh, weeks you are at school, how many uh, weeks you are at the, uh, in the comp learning in the company, what are the competence goals of the goals of the education, the evaluation plans, and so on and so on. <clears throat> in all, we can say in Denmark that it's the trade committees that are responsible for the development of the educational programs and the schools are responsible for offering, offering the educational programs, but it's not the schools that define what are the goals, competence goals that are teach, uh, taught in the school, what is, um, how is the evaluation plan and so on. That is the traits that are responsible for that. And uh, as such, have the, uh, also had the uh, obligation to every year follow what is um, the technical um, scientific uh, development of the branch, what is the new skills demand coming up, what is in the pipelines for the future, and uh, continuously train, uh, uh, continuously uh, developing the programs so we are talking Mr. the boss. Okay, well. Wow. So our bank continuously um, can develop the program so they are in line with the skills demand demands of the companies. Finally, we have the um, local trade committees and school boards, where um, the social um, partners uh, are represented and uh, take part in the governance of the schools, how they, the schools develop and develop to serve the, the different branches, uh, the labor force, and also um, kind of coordinates um, with the local labor markets uh, on developing on the program. So as such, the social partners are involved in all levels of the VET uh, system. Um, and uh, it's just, uh, is establishing these very close connections between the labor market and the development, uh, the development of the VET programs and making sure that we all continuously have a very high employability of the, um, of the students coming out from the uh, VET, VET programs. A fourth level of uh, cooperation um, is the three partite uh, agreements, uh, which plays an important role in Denmark, especially a play, has played an important role the last four or five years and uh, very much during the pandemic or during COVID-19, where we have had a lot of um, cooperation between government companies and um, uh, employers, employers organizations, employees organizations. Uh, it's a form that uh, where government and uh, trade unions and employers organizations get together and uh, agree on some problems that should be solved and uh, kind of make agreements that are uh, kind of uh, solve those problems that comes up and where government uh, where parliament tends to always follow it if the uh, employers, the employees and the government uh, uh, agrees on something, Parliament usually follows that um, that agreement and makes that, turns that into, uh, uh, into legislation which have this strong side that when the legislation are passed and uh, should be implemented, all 
parties has a very strong commitment to actually making this decision a success, which is not always the case if it's just a kind of political uh, agreement made in Parliament. So although we think we have a great system, we, we have some difficulties. Uh, we have an overall problem where we have not enough skilled workers. And uh, the main uh, reason for that is that there's too few uh, young people applying for vets. And it's also a problem that the people with work experience tend to, uh, tend to uh, not uh, apply for a vet. So we have a, a decrease in the in the vet students and um, that's a, a big challenge because we have already shortage of some skills and on the other side we have a, a bit of excess of others but it's a, a problem that we are facing now and uh, it will all only uh, uh, be worse in the future. There's also a problem about um, too few apprentices positions and that's what, what uh, the some of the tripartite agreement has uh, made an effort uh, to, to solve that problem. So we see uh, see the numbers. You can see that there's a big difference between the the demand and the supply, and it's only uh, going to get worse as we uh, as we see into the future. And uh, one of the challenges is that uh, so few of the young people they uh, there's a majority of the young people uh, applying for high school uh, gymnasium after uh, primary school. It's up to about eight uh, percent in some uh, some part of the, the, the country. And uh, that means that uh, we don't get enough vet students to fill out the positions that the companies need. And we don't get enough vet students who can uh, uh, fill out the, the shortage for, for skilled workers in the future. So as Morten said, we have the, made a number of uh, tripartite agreements uh, from 2016 to 2020. Uh, the first one was in November uh, 2016, where we... Uh, agreed on a basic principle that uh, employers are committed to create uh, more apprentice positions. Uh, it was a, a challenge and it's, it's, it still is uh, for some in some ways uh, to, uh, to secure that the apprentices uh, get the position and get a contract with the, uh, with the company. So we uh, so in some ways, this uh, tripartite agreement was uh, groundbreaking because we said if you employ skilled workers, you have to participate in training them as well. And we said that firms who don't take pay part in training apprentices are re rewarded. And firms who, uh, who do, do not particip participate is uh, punished financially. So that was a, a kind of gro groundbreaking deal that we were facing the companies and saying, oh, if you don't uh, participate in, uh, in training uh, the future skilled workers, then you have to, to pay a, a found who also uh, meets in the AUB system. So we have a kind of a, a financial circulation uh, in the model where it uh, ensures that the costs and uh, is, uh, is distributed. So it uh, makes sure that the companies who who take part in training uh, skilled workers is uh, is financially rewarded. So in uh, May 2020, uh, we made a, a, a major agreement and the main purpose was to support uh, the apprenticeships uh, during COVID-19 because uh, many uh, companies were, were closed and they didn't uh, 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 make, uh, did, they did not make any new contract with the apprenticeship centers, with the apprenticeships. Uh, so we had a lot, a lot of uh, wet uh, students who didn't get uh, an apprenticeship with a with the company, uh, in some cases because the company were closed, and in others just because that they, they, they stopped hiring due to the insecurity. Uh, in November 2020, um, we made a new tripartite agreement, and uh, it has a substantial funding of the trade committees, uh, which uh, which well, the goal was to uh, to uh, support uh, extra apprenticeship and quality for the web programs. Uh, so um, it's the le legislation is not uh, accepted yet uh, in the parliament, but we're very excited to see how it goes and how the results are of uh, of, of, of that uh, that tripartite tri agreement. It also uh, uh, had a, a goal for the vet schools to find apprenticeships from early in, in the individual program. That was a very uh, high political uh, desire for the Minister of Employment to set goals for the schools 
helping the the vet students students to get apprenticeships uh, early on in their uh, in their individual program to make sure that uh, more more students actually fulfill and finish their vet program. So as you can see, it's been a, an effort with the success uh, since the tripartite agreement in 2016. We've seen a uh, uh, an increasing in the number of uh, active apprenticeships, and uh, you can see in 2020 uh, we uh, we didn't uh, met the roof, but it was a very very high uh, increase uh, in 2020, and that was uh, due to the tripartite agreement where we uh, to uh, help the students who were working uh, apprenticeships during the the COVID-19. We said to the companies that we would make them a, a a, a, a much much larger reimbursement in the rest of uh, 2020, so they got get uh, uh, heavily reduced expenses, uh, which led to a, a sharp rise in the uh, in the positions for uh, for apprenticeships. So you can see the the for the first half of uh, 2020, we haven't uh, uh, reached the same uh, number as in in 2020. Um, but um, but it's still a positive development we see in 2021, and we hope that the, it will uh, 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 it will still uh, increase. Uh, so we have a bigger, bit better match between apprenticeships and, and companies, and we can uh, work to fulfill the 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 lack of skilled workers in the future. Just to finish this presentation, a few words on the, the advantages of strong involvement of the social partners. What do you gain from it? The first, first thing I would emphasize is the uh, strong coordination between development of programs and the labor market. Uh, uh, the labor market demands. This is very important, as, as stated earlier. Also, the high employability of the candidates coming out of the VET programs, that, that's a very important indicator. You always also get a very high level of uh, commitment from the employers and employees to the VET systems and support to, uh, to develop it. That was also, Karina said, in terms of um, the three per tide agreements and so on. And you get, we have the substantial uh, labor market contribution to the financing of the VET system. Finally, a few words, if uh, we think this, uh, this Danish model is applicable to other countries, probably not one-to-one. -one. Uh, it's a product of a long historical development that's the, the, the specific way we've developed our system and presented here. But the idea that the quality of bed is strongly uh, connected to the labor market uh, is important. And the mindset that there is a mutual interest in a high, uh, highly educated, highly skilled labor force, mutual uh, interest between companies and employ, uh, employ, employees in uh, a high level of skills is it is important uh, mindset to have. Also, um, yeah, you have the employability and the mobility of labor force and center uh, to uh, in the, the development. Um, of the uh, of the system and the fact uh, the approach that all parties assume responsibility to make the system a, a success. This is thing you might experience uh, the importance of that. is experiences you might bring on. So thank you for this chance to present the change system and the social partners. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Karina and Morten, uh, about uh, presenting your perspective, perspective from uh, uh, trade unions and perspective from the employers about vocational education in Denmark. And here from Vilnius, we have one question to you. Despite the fact that you mentioned that uh, you noticed the decrease uh, of uh, vet student uh, in education system. Uh, still in your presentation you mentioned that about 75% uh, of uh, students uh, learn at their workplace. Could you tell us, uh, while looking at different economic sectors, uh, is this proportion more or less the same when you look at vet programs? Or you see that in some sectors, for example, learning at workplace is more popular than in other sectors? How it is in Denmark? Thank you. 
I'll say that this, the, the work-based training, uh, about 70 to 75%, is the same in, 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 in different VET programs. But I think there are some discussions about, is that the right model for every education, uh, for every work program? Because the, the programs are very different uh, if you are in construction, uh, construction or in office services. Uh, it's a, a broad variety of web, web programs. And uh, I think there is a, a, it could be discussed whether it's the right model uh, for, for every uh, program to have up to 70% uh, work-based training. Okay, so thank you, Karina and Morten, uh, once more. And maybe, like Morten, ask whether the Danish uh, uh, system might be applicable in other countries. Probably to make it applicable, you really need a Danish government, Danish student, Danish teacher, and definitely the Danish trade unions and Danish employers in, in every country with the whole mindset you have. So thank you once more for really inspiring presentation and showing how vital is the role of employers and trade unions. Unions and vet education.